Um, Rob, I suppose this now brings us to business. That's where Harriet the story took us. Your company, Interface, changed direction 16 years ago, embracing sustainability as a, as a business imperative. Why was that and what do you do? Well, I guess we had an awakening um, some 16 years ago now, back uh, 1995 or 6, that, uh, that the way that we were doing business was fundamentally out of step with nature and therefore fundamentally working against nature and against ourselves, if you look at it from, from a long-term point of view. And it was an awakening had by our founder and chairman, Ray Anderson, who was reading a book entitled The Ecology of Commerce by an author, Paul Hawken. And Hawken's book outlined the uh, degree to which nature systems were in a state of decline and the link that business had to that, the fact that business was at the, at the heart of the problem. And in Ray's view, it's sort of branded Interface as a company as, as a plunderer of the earth. And he vowed from that point onwards to attempt to make a change, to attempt to run our business in a, a different way. By way of context and background, we're in the very sexy business of, uh, of making carpets, um, which is uh, an extremely um, material-intensive business. There's, there's a whole lot of stuff that goes into them. Um, it's a big contributor to landfill at the end of the life of, um, of the product. And it has also been traditionally fairly petrochemical intensive as well in terms of the basic raw materials that are used and the energy sources that we use to run the factories. So in that way, even though we are a relatively small multinational with sales of around $1 billion US a year, operating in 80 countries around the world, um, listed in the US, um, we have had a very significant environmental footprint. So we decided um, from that point on to try to create for ourselves a business that in the year 2020 was sustainable across a whole range of dimensions. And we focused on three main areas um, of action. Firstly, to uh, reduce our environmental footprint um, in terms of waste, emissions, water, um, so on and so forth. Um, we focused on attempting to close the loop on our material flows so that in trying to emulate nature, um, we would turn to a more cyclical approach uh, in terms of using the waste from the product, the end of life of the product, as the raw material for the next cycle of product, um, rather than adopting what has always been done since the dawn of the first industrial revolution, where we all take stuff from the Earth's crust, we then convert it into something, um, it has a life and it's dumped. It's a take, make, waste, linear model. Um, that was the second course of action. Um, the third basic strategy was to attempt to uh, create um, in our own team and those around us and engage culture to make the first two things happen, those, those first two areas real. So here we are um, 16 years later and uh, we would say that we're about halfway there to our goal. Um, we have reduced our greenhouse gas emissions in absolute terms by 35%. We're down 80% in water usage. We're down 80% on energy consumption per unit. Um, we're down 80% uh, waste to landfill, and our profits have gone the other direction. Um, I'll come to that in a moment. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not just one-way traffic, unfortunately. Um, so... We think we're about to halfway there, and we've done it through um, a range of things. It's about focusing on the really small steps, and as Harriet was saying, it's, a, it's about the power of each of us as individuals to make a difference. There are very few big bang solutions in this area, in our, in our experience so far. Um, it's about trying to nurture small ideas from a whole range of people right the way through the company and outside the company, so small steps. Um, it's about starting off with waste, um, which is the major um, money spinner. Uh, as a $1 billion company, we've saved $500 million in waste over the past 16 years with our attempt on every site, on every factory, in every office, in every country, everywhere in the world to reduce waste by 10% per year cumulatively. Um, we've got here so far by attempting to use nature as a model as to how we should run our business. Nature, when in balance, is the most efficient system that there is. 
So we can learn as a business so much from the way that nature runs itself in terms of its energy sources, how it deals with waste, so on and so forth. So um, we have been attempting to model our business on nature. Um, and when it comes to um, the fact that we have this global spread and that we operate factories um, in Thailand, China, um, developing countries, um, we, take, we take very much a local approach. Um, we found that there is a direct relationship between our success in terms of market share and profitability to the degree to which we are local. You can draw, uh, draw a line from any of our factories and the further away you go from the factory, the lower our market share. And that to us is a, is a very obvious thing. If you invest in a local community, if you invest in local assets, if you go in to a country like a Thailand, for example, and establish a local supply chain around you, um, you have established a presence, um, you, have a, you have an organization that can nurture your people, um, that has a local presence that can serve as customers that much better, and as a result, business improves and the local economy also gets that benefit. So being local is a very central part of our overall strategy. Um, in terms of the business case, well, after 16 years, what we have found is that our costs are significantly lower. Um, we use less stuff to make the product, um, which is always a good thing. We, we have less waste, we're using less energy. Um, we have much better products because we are using some of nature's principles with the way that we design them. And they are much more cost effective and offer uh, that much better value for money. We have so many more customers because we found um, the companies want to do business with other companies who care about the way that they make their money. And most importantly for us, as a company uh, trying to compete with the likes of IBM for talent and you're making carpet, um, we found that there's nothing, um, nothing better for uh, creating uh, an amazing level of engagement in terms of recruitment and retention if you can offer people um, a path where it matters the way that you make your money. So we would say that there's a, an extremely strong business case here. We've seen profits go, go north um, as a result of what we've done. So we're only about halfway there, but we're on the way. And we think that we, 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 we have found a model that makes sense in a whole range of ways. <laughs> Again, store out the questions. I'm sure I can see some of the young people in the front wanting to ask questions. But